you design this. Well, let's talk about you. Where do you get your ideas? I don't think we've discussed that fully. From, from nature itself. I, I mean, uh, if you can remember, I had said uh, when I was a kid, I used to look out the window and basically the trees, the movement of the wind, the branches on the leaves, I mean branches on the trees, uh, the snow, just anything. If I see people I want to design, if I see that they're wearing something that they they really shouldn't wear, I'd start designing around that. I mean, sometimes I just have to turn my brain off because it's just overworked. You know, now I'm getting to the point where people ask me, uh, you know, what I think about this or that. I just have to really, like, not comment because... You're designing all the time. All the time. All the time. I sometimes have to pray for rest. Yeah, a lot of newspaper columnists are writing columns all the time. Uh, I know. You, you're gathering information and you're putting it in this great computer. Right, right. And, uh, you know, basically people are looking for, they're not looking forward for me telling them all the things that I have, you know, just conjured up in my mind. So it's best for me just to leave it alone and not comment too much. Here's a question that uh, we couldn't do this show without some kind of response from you. If you should go back to Robert Taylor Holmes tonight or tomorrow, and you talk to the, the older folk there and the children, what would you say to each group? Okay, I'm going to start with the children uh, because that's where my heart is. Um, I would tell them that whatever you want to be, you can be that. Don't let anyone, not even if it's your parent, tell you that your dreams can't be met. The only thing you have to realize is you have to work for it and you have to be able to dream it to turn it into reality and make sure you really love it because it's very, very difficult. I said to myself that this is the hardest thing that I've ever done in my whole life and I've been doing this for eight years and I've never gotten paid for this yet so you know I must love it. <laughs> and to the, uh, uh, still with the children, you must go to school because knowledge is power and it's more, it's more, it's more valuable than money and no one can ever take that away from you. They may be able to say things about you and try to discriminate and try not to let you through, but believe me, if you have the knowledge, these people will respect you and you will get everything that you want done. And to the older people, I would tell them that um, poverty is in the mind and if you think past that, then you can grow you know, having a cash flow problem, cash flow problem is just temporary. But if you if if you just stuck in a in in a in a rut, and you can't think past this, then you'll never get out. And so if you you just die there, and uh, I think of everybody's problem there basically as a cash flow problem, and they you should. You don't let it get you down. No, I can't let it get me down. The only thing I can do is reach back and try to help whoever I can help. And I know that I really can't do too much unless I have some type of, uh, um, of uh, base for myself. Could you say that you are en route to a, a sort of universal acceptance as a businesswoman, yeah. as a fashion designer right. in, in all communities? Yeah. Well, I think that I was universal first before I was accepted amongst my own. Really? Yes. I mean, that's one thing we have as our own problems with blacks, is we accept you only when someone else say accept you, and that I don't like. You know? What percentage of your business, your clientele, what percentage is white? Ninety-five. But maybe this is because you're downtown? I was in Hyde Park, and I started my business in Hyde Park. And uh, I lived in the neighborhood for 15 years. I had my first business in Hyde Park, which in 1976, I opened a health club. I was the only black person in Chicago to own a health club. And uh, so basically I've been struggling and trying to make these dreams come true, knowing that I could save lives and make people happy. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you know, my customers have always been about 95%.
white. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay.